Hello, this is Brian Knutson, Wealth Advisor with Cutler Investment Group. I want to talk to you today about the yield curve inversion situation, which has been garnering a lot of headlines and give you some thoughts about how this can impact the markets and how it can impact client portfolios. So what is a yield curve inversion? This is a situation where, oh, I'm sorry, where bond investors are being paid more to be on the short end of the yield curve than they are on the long end of the yield curve. In a classic example, this should not be the case. You should be paid more as you go out on the yield curve for the incremental increase in interest rate, market risk, et cetera. But that is not happening right now. What is happening is we are seeing that the, the short end of the curve is being held up in some, some people's view by uh, Fed actions and also uh, by some significant buying on the longer end of the curve. We are seeing that the 10-year ten year uh, treasury is now yielding uh, effectively somewhere in the one fives, which is a huge drop from where it was even just six months ago, a year ago. And that's after only one rate cut by the Fed of last month. So what is driving this? Some significant buying pressure on the 10-year plus end of the curve. And a lot of that pressure is coming not from U.S. buyers. This is coming from foreign buyers who are in places such as, let's say, Germany, where a 10-year bond right now is going to yield you effectively zero or perhaps even a phenomenon you might have seen where they're talking about negative effective yields. So if I'm over there, I'm saying I don't love a 1.6 or a 1.55 even right now, but at least it's better than zero. So what does that mean for buyers here? We saw a sharp drop again several days ago in the stock market because there is uh, some uh, there is historical precedence, I should say, for saying that an inverted yield curve can lead to a recession. However, as a, a former Fed chair, Mr. Samuelson, Samuelson excuse me, said a long time ago, uh, the, the stock market has uh, predicted nine out of the last five recessions. He's not entirely wrong. Having a market drop, even a sizable market drop, does not mean that we are going into a recession. Not all recessions are even the same. Some of them are much milder than others. So that's important to note as well. So why, what do we think about the situation right now? We do not see a recession being imminent. The largest driver of that thought process is the consumer. The consumer is two thirds, 70%, depending on your metric of US economic activity. That is of course significant. We have seen some really sharp uh, rises and some also some steady, uh, steady high numbers in certain very important consumer uh, side uh, buying uh, situations. We're seeing that they're doing very well on, on doing sort of recurring buys. We're seeing some willingness to make increases in things like say Amazon Prime Days and such, where we saw some really strong numbers. If that were to start to erode, and consumer confidence is a very fickle measure because consumers are impacted by headlines, then we could see a situation where we do see some drop in that part of economic activity. We're also seeing a pretty wide dispersion between the consumer side of the economy and the more, let's call it, industrial side of the economy. The industrial side is being impacted as we speak by tariffs, by trade war, by uh, some reduction in, uh, in future purchases, both here and more significantly abroad. So that is an area to, to be focused on. That's where we really wanna watch. We wanna see if that ripple effect were to start to cross over to the consumer. As far as our positioning goes, we just had a, a long discussion about rebalancing ideas for portfolios. We have decided not to increase our bond weights. We think our bond weights are appropriate and we do not want to necessarily buy into this uh, recent spike in bond prices. Instead, for us, what we're looking at is some ways to mitigate overall volatility. And we have decided the best way to do that is an increase in an absolute return fund that's already part of almost every client portfolio. And now what we're gonna do is make a measured increase on that side instead of uh, making an increase on the bond side. We think that is prudent in the situation as it stands right now. If you do have any questions about the yield curve, about markets, anything like that, please reach out to your advisor and or uh, we can loop in a member of our investment committee such as myself and we can talk about it further. We appreciate your confidence with us and we, uh, we wish you a great day. Thank you.